Happy Mother's Day. I, I hope you knew it was Mother's Day before you got here today. Um, if you didn't, uh, Aaron told the 830 crowd, he's right, Fan and Flowers is still open. It's not too late. Um, they won't make you a deal, but they will sell you something. So uh, you can flub Father's Day and no harm, no foul. But if you miss Mother's Day, you will spend points that will take you a lifetime to recover. So get that right. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a complicated day. There, there's something culturally and spiritually powerful about mothering that speaks to us in profound ways and we search for and try to grasp what that means. It's a complex day. It's, it's a nice day because everybody has a mother. And it's a complicated day because everybody has a mother. And you know what I mean by that. And so as, as I, we come into the sanctuary today and I'm trying to find what is the word that we're prepared to hear from the Lord today, I'm mindful that for some of us, this is the first Mother's Day without our mama. And for some of us, though nobody is promised tomorrow, we have the real sense this may be the last Mother's Day with our mother. Some of us come into the sanctuary today feeling the pain of a mother who was wanting. And some people come into the sanctuary today feeling the pain of wanting to be a mother. And lots of folks come into the sanctuary today just wanting to celebrate life and love and family and the grace that has carried us all these days and brought us to here. And how do you balance that? And how do you speak to all of that? And if you work that out and would let me know, then I'll have it ready for next year at this time. Because <laughs> I, I don't. And so as I've reflected on what's the thing that we ought to share today, what I'm mindful of is in other years we have dealt with the complexities and the difficulties of Mother's Day. And what if today we just celebrated? What if today we just reveled in the wonder of mothering and today we acknowledge that it is always a miracle to become a mother, whether by birth or by adoption, whether by birth or through some other kind of blessing. It's always a miracle to become a mother, and it's always frightening to be a mother, and always hopeful. And there carries within being a mother the, the absolute power to change the world. Somebody said the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, and that's right. There is the potential in every human life to make dramatic difference in the world and in parenting and especially in mothering, we shape and nurture and grow that potential. Today I think we ought to just celebrate motherhood and since this is the sermon time, more than just celebrate, what I'd like to do is reflect on one lesson about mothering that teaches us something essential to our faith. And so I thought we'd start at the beginning, it's a very good place to start, uh, and look at one of the, the most famous discoveries of impending pregnancy in the history of the world. If you'll turn in your Bible, it's in the first chapter of Luke's Gospel. Luke chapter 1, we'll begin together in verse 26. The Gospel according to Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And there the Scripture says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. He was sent to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph. Joseph was of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. But Mary was utterly confused by his speech and wondered what this greeting might mean. And so the angel said to her, Fear not. The Lord is with you. You shall conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will have no end. Mary said, How shall this be? For I am a virgin. And so the angel explained to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and Most High shall overshadow you, and therefore your child will be holy, 
And will be called the Son of God. See, Elizabeth, your kinswoman, who is called barren, even she is conceived late in her life and is even now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the Lord's servant. May it be unto me even as you have spoken it. And then the angel withdrew from her. This is the word of the Lord. We usually share this passage together about Christmas time as we're leading into Advent. But if you think of the birth of Jesus as happening in late December, this event probably happened sometime in March. In fact, the lectionary records it as a reading for about the 25th of March. That makes sense, doesn't it? Now, if you've been pregnant, I don't know how it was you discovered you were pregnant, or the drama that surrounded that moment, but my guess is it didn't look quite like this. That being said, every time you discover that there is life growing inside your body that is ultimately not your own, that's a miracle. And it is overwhelming. There is a power about that discovery that changes the way you see everything else. Things smell more vivid. Colors are brighter. You're attuned to the world in a different way because there's life inside of you. I told the 830 congregation, I wasn't going to tell this story, but Rachel said I should. Um, My wife had a fender bender every time she was pregnant. (laughs) Once... I had gone to her office on the Baylor campus to print a paper that was due, and I'd gotten there early, and I was literally the only car in the parking lot. And she came to work, and she hit our parked car (laughs) with our moving car. And we discovered something about pregnancy messed up Missy's depth perception in ways that made me nervous. So I met, I had an accountability group. We met every Thursday morning to pray together and to read through a book together and to share our lives and to be transparent with one another. And the group was two psychologists and a surgeon and a banker and an investment guy and two ministers. And so after the, uh, I asked the surgeon, can you lose your depth perception while you're pregnant? And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, can you explain pregnancy to me? And his face took on an awestruck image. And he said, no. (laughs) He said, we can chronicle pregnancy, but we can't explain pregnancy. It's a miracle. We can chronicle pregnancy. We can say that there is a human being who consists of certain chemical functions, chemical balances, fluid balances, electrolyte balances, and they become pregnant and cease to chemically be that person. All of those things change. Their chemical balance is different. Electrolyte balance is different. uh, Fluid balance is different. Their hormones are different. Um, and, And it is a totally different human being. We can chronicle how that happens, how suddenly in the midst of that, that there are two people. We can talk about how a sperm and an egg come together to form a zygote. We can talk about at the rate of cellular division. We can tell you at how many weeks into the pregnancy, what should be happening. We can chronicle it, but we can't explain it to you. We can see that one person somehow becomes two people and that the child carries the DNA of the mother and the father in them for the rest of their lives and then somehow, magically, mysteriously, the mother goes back to be essentially the person she was before save the fact that her child's DNA is still in her body. And if you test the mother for the rest of her life, that DNA will be floating around inside of her. We can chronicle pregnancy, but we cannot explain pregnancy. It's just a miracle. And I think he's right about that. Most of the time, when we try to get a handle on who God is, we talk about the fatherhood of God. And I think that's right, too. The predominant image of God in Scripture is as our Father. But there are also mothering images of God in the Scripture. 
Jesus looks longingly at Jerusalem and says, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, would that you would have let me gather you together as a hen gathers her chicks. 